Today we're going to be covering over the fall bass patterns on Lake of the Ozarks, techniques, how you guys can catch them, habits, and what you guys can do to become better anglers out here on this lake during the fall to catch more bass and bigger bass and be more successful out on the water. I'm going to jump right into this thing here, guys. But first, if you guys are new here, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more content like these, any more of my lake breakdowns. I have some out already for crappie, bass, and walleye on the lake. If you're interested in any of those species and how to catch them on Lake of the Ozarks throughout the year, check out some of the other videos on my channel. And uh, we're going to get right into this thing now. The main challenge Fall Presents is locating the fish from day to day. They are constantly on the move chasing shad as water temperatures start to drop on this lake. Temperatures start to drop out of the 80s and into the 70s and 60s, bringing fish up to the shallows to feed, packing on some weight for the winter time. And shad is the main forage for these fish during this time of year. They really like to feed up on those as much as possible. And the shad get kind of spread out through the water column at the beginning of the year. So in the beginning of fall, the shad are actually suspended out here a little bit more off these points and kind of doing their summertime thing that they do. This is the Osage river arm up here. I am up here. I don't know what mile marker I'm at exactly, but I'll zoom out so you guys can kind of see where I'm at on the lake here. But I'm up here kind of on the upper end of the Osage arm. This is a big long cove here, and these fish will be out here on these points during the summertime. Maybe they're off a couple of these secondary points, some of these different docks. If there's brush piles and things like that, they'll be suspended out in there. And then as the temperatures start to cool off in the very beginning, like let's say late September, early October, like we're in now, I'm, I'm sitting here recording this today, it's October 2nd, we got a cold rain kind of coming in, cooling some things off. This water temperature in this top layer here will start to get cooled off just a little bit because it's been up in the 80s and it'll start dropping down to the 70s. I think the water temperature right now is like in the mid-70s as I, as I speak it right now. Some of these fish are still going to be hanging on these points doing their summertime thing and the only difference that will happen with these fish that are hanging out here is they'll start to suspend up in the water column so they might have been suspended down like 10 to 15 feet in the water and now that the bait is coming up to the surface they're going to come up to the surface as well and as the water temperature keeps continuing to drop down like a rock these fish will continue to migrate and follow these bait fish as they come back into these shallower pockets right off these ends here. These are going to be the areas that the bait fish are going to go into first. They're going to be the shallow areas here, back behind some of these dock cables, along these walkways. They will be traveling back into these creek arms if there's any kind of water flowing back in there from the cold rain that we've been getting relatively to the lake temperature. They're going to be following along the bank here, incoming further and further back into the shallow flats where they're going to feed up. And all the game fish, including the bass, are going to chase them back there and pack on the pounds before winter hits. So we really need to be starting to move into the backs of coves as the temperature drops. More shad will be in the backs of coves the further along into fall we get closer to that 60 to 70 degree range, especially in the backs of these coves that have creeks in them. So this is a, a creek bed that's right here, a little bit deeper along this bank. And then over here, it's really shallow. Not all the fish are going to migrate back here at the same time, though. So some of the shad will still be kind of staged out here along some of these points and other creek channels coming back in. They'll be close up to the surface of the water column, regardless as the temperature starts to cool. And they'll be moving further and further shallow along the banks, but they won't all be back there at the same time, and neither will all the bass. Keep moving water by power fishing with top water spinner baits, crank baits. Until you find the fish and then you can kind of slow down with maybe like some jerk baits or continue to fish those baits a little bit slower through those areas once you find them because those fish are going to be moving around so much and that's the real challenge during the fall period is just being able to find the fish day to day because they're chasing shad so much they're not back here to spawn in an area and hang out for a really long time they may be back in that area as long as the shad are there but if the shad move out for a little bit they're going to pull right back out with them so if you guys have ever seen shad on top of the surface, it kind of looks like a bunch of little ripples out there and the water is really calm. You can see them um, without even really seeing the fish. You can see the ripples that they make on the surface. Don't think that every school of shad is going to have fish all over it because they don't. Just kind of go into areas where shad are and then look for areas that bass would hold to regularly like lay downs, brush piles, shallow docks, things of that nature. And if you see fish blowing up on shad out there, Obviously, go and target that school of fish because you can see that they're being eaten unless you're seeing that and you're not really seeing any kind of surface action going on as far as the shad being attacked 
or them starting to kind of dart all over the place. If they're really shallow water, you'll see them kind of just start to jump out of the water, swimming really fast, just skimming across the surface. They're being chased at that point. You should definitely go and target those schools of shad. Otherwise, I would target the structure, uh, whether that would be like a hard spot on the bottom where the rest of the back of this flat in here might be all mud from sediment. There might be like a little hard spot off to the side of any of these little creek, creek beds here or in the creek bed itself. Those fish might be setting up here using it like a highway running up here and then coming off this ledge to feed on some fish. And as these fish are up here really shallow, cold fronts can really put a twist in things in the barometric pressure. If the barometric pressure drops too much, some of them will stay up here and they might just lay down in the mud. So some of them might still be up right where they were, right on the bank even, and just not really have any desire to eat anything at the very moment. Uh, others will pull off to some of these more deeper creek beds where it might be dropped down to 15, 20 feet again. And they might be hanging out into there into an old brush pile or something suspended out for a few days and then come back up once the barometric pressure kind of levels out for a little bit and everything kind of gets situated again because fish have a swim bladder and the barometric pressure is affected by that kind of affects how they can feed. But as far as targeting these fish back here with different baits and things, I'd stick to just keep moving along with your power fishing stuff like your top water spinner baits, crank baits until you find the fish. Um, some good examples of that to be using would be like a whopper plopper. It's a really good classic during the fall. Before the whopper plopper came out, we had buzz baits. Um, I'm kind of going to stick with these kind of colors with them being more of like a white or a silver, maybe some blue, maybe a little bit of black or some chrome in there. Something that resembles shad or bait fish because that's what these fish are going to be up there for. They're not coming up and eating a bunch of crawdads in the shallows like they were earlier in the spring. They're not up there as much for the bluegill as they are the shad now. But for the mass majority of these fish, they're up there because the shad have migrated from the points to up there along the shallow flats and along the banks. Uh, spooks are good. And these are all just topwater baits. And so if you want something that's really loud and kind of stands out, you can cover a lot of water with. Buzz bait, whopper ploppers, excellent. If you want something that you could kind of work and pause a little bit more, um, you can maybe take a little bit more of a a slower approach to use something like this bone color Zara spook here you can take some spinner baits and burn them across the shallows you can use something with these willow blades if the water's a little bit more clear if the water gets a little bit more muddy because they're in the shallow water after a big rain like what i'm having here today the water will get stained up more muddied up more use more of these indiana style blades here that are like this top little one here you can get them in like a bigger colorado blade or an indiana blade it's got a lot more thump on it so it'll help those fish find that bait if the water is a little bit more muddy up, but if it's clear where you can see a few feet into, I'd stick with these willow blades that's here on the back. It's the big long one. Square bills, excellent choice as well. They bane off the cover down there. You can power fish these. Uh, the only issue that I have with these, as well as with some of the whopper ploppers and some of the top waters, is once the leaves start to fall, you start to catch all the leaves as well. So that's kind of an issue with those. So sometimes. Whenever it's being like that, something I would try to do is Texas rig a swim bait, like a paddle tail swim bait, and burn it across the top of the water column, and it can make like a little bit of a wake uh, and a ripple up there on the surface like you would with the top water, and you can let it sink down a little bit, and you can let it bang into the into the bottom, like the square bill here will dig into the bottom and bang across the rocks. You can bang around a swim bait in there too if, if you rig it up Texas style and you can kind of slow roll that through there and then kind of burn it. Another bait that I really like during the fall period, especially as the temperatures start to cool off even more, it becomes more and more of a slower bite because the metabolism of those fish does start to slow down once you get past the 60s and starting getting into the lower 50s and 40s in water temperatures. You're getting more and more into a wintertime bite. This is a bait that you could fish during the whole season of it. I really like it more towards late fall because you could fish it a lot slower. Those are really good baits to be using. I kind of stick with these same kind of shad style colors. You could do a little bit of chartreuse, gold, some silver, that kind of thing. And you'll do great with those kind of bait selection. I'm going to take you guys over to another section of the lake over here. But before I do that, I need to explain something else to you guys. Not everything on this lake happens all at once because the lake is so freaking huge. Um, this lake is so big, it's impossible to characterize everything the same. Areas up here on the far upper end of the Osage River arm here are going to be a lot different structurally and depth-wise because you see all the shallow areas that I have up here. It's this darker blue, and there's a lot. So there's a lot of area up here 
that you guys could fish and their shad are going to be really close to the surface. The bass will be up there and this area might be excellent during the beginning of the year. This water temperature is going to cool off faster because it's shallower. Shallower water changes temperature faster than deep water. So the upper ends of the Osage are going to be cooled off a little bit faster. Those fish might be in the backs of these pockets like back into these creek coves like these. Before they even get close to that, there might be a whole week or two out from some of the areas back in here along Bagnell Dam on the lower end of the lake where it's like 100 foot deep in the main channel as opposed to like 20 feet deep up here on the upper Osage. So keep that in mind as I'm telling you guys this. Um, those fish are going to be a lot sooner and further along on those upper arms, especially even like the little Niangua up here or the big Niangua up here. Again, you see a lot more of that darker blue. It's shallower water. Those areas are going to be like that. They're also going to be the first to muddy up during a big rain. So keep that in mind as well. And speaking of muddying up, the lake will go into what we call a fall turnover where the whole lake will turn to more of like a chocolate looking mess as more and more of the bottom gets stirred up from the cooling water temperatures on the surface. As that water cools off, it becomes the denser water and it starts to mix with the bottom because the bottom will be warmer than the top, so the bottom water will come up to the surface, pulling all the debris on the bottom up with it. And therefore you have like this little bit of a whirl whirling effect where it's kind of cycling through the water from the top to the bottom. It stirs up everything and makes everything really foggy, uh, heavy stain to like a muddy water. It can be really tough to fish the fall turnover, but it's not impossible to catch fish still. I would just slow down your approach and use something that's got a lot of vibration to it, something that's got a little bit more chartreuse or maybe like a black so they can just see the silhouette of the bait up there. Just something that's going to stand out in that water column because it does get harder for those fish to hunt as their sight goes down in that muddy water. I'm going to take you guys up here onto the big Niangua and show you guys an area that gets really good during this time of year up by Halatanka. There is a big shallow area, a lot of different flats over here. Out along here, the old river beds and things, there's big almost sandbars out here where stumps are sitting on. Those fish will congregate around that. They'll congregate out here along some of these other sandy flats, backs of these feeder creeks. This cove here has got a really big flat in the back of it. A lot of shad in, a lot of shad in the back of these coves here. Old Creek Arms, uh, back in Hideaway, back here in Old Kinderhook. Um, this is the other cove in Old Kinderhook, gets good back in there. Any kind of laydowns you guys can find in any of these coves, any kind of uh, stumps, any kind of brush piles, those fish are going to use that as like an ambushing spot. So if those shad are not right by them, those are kind of where your more lethargic fish are going to be kind of hanging out at in general. Uh, but that doesn't mean if you run a square bill or a spinner bait right by that brush or right by that log that there's not going to be a fish that comes out and just nails it because they're waiting there opportunistic like instead of chasing the fish constantly they're going to kind of hang out in those areas especially on a bigger sunny day. Middle of the day those are going to be your key areas. They're going to be right up against that tight shade. Some of these backs of these coves here as well they get good. Uh, these big long points like this one here it's really profound. Um, some of these different shelves out here, there's some different shelves all along through here. They're great during the summertime, and then those fish are going to track right along these banks, right along off of these points here, and then they're going to migrate more and more and more to the back, chasing those shad. As that water temperature cools off more and more and more, they'll start working their way back out, little bit by little bit, along with the shad, and they'll be right back out here where they started in their summer spots, which is also where they winter at. So as you get to the late late fall, I'd be starting to look more out here, slow down your approach to more of those jerk baits. You could still catch them on the swim baits and the spinner baits, but you're going to be slowing down your approach a lot, probably fishing a little bit deeper. But if you guys are ever confused on how you guys get started with this thing and you're not catching fish in the back of one pocket, like let's say this is over here by the mouth of the little Niangua. Here's the big Niangua right here. Here's a cove. We're going to go into this cove not seeing anything out here it's like beginning of fall go right to the back I wouldn't mess around with in between I'm gonna see if they're in the back I'm gonna see if they're at the front and then if I know that they're not in either of those places I might come through here do a quick glance at some of this middle area and there should be some fish migrated somewhere up here along the bank um, chasing some shad if you're not seeing any shad in a cove I wouldn't stay in that cove very long at all because they're gonna be fish 
feeding somewhere on those shad and those shad are going to be the main reason why those fish are up shallow so if there's no bait in your area I wouldn't stay there very long. We'll come down here to Mid Lake. This kind of is in the middle of the zone. Lynn Creek has got a great big old creek in the back of it. I've shown you guys this in other videos as well. Big shallow area, big feeding flat. Another great big old creek bed that comes in through here. Fish use that like a highway. Um, this area through here is fairly shallow as well. It's a great big flat back here. It's a massive feeding flat for all kinds of fish. The bass will be mixed in back there with the white bass and the catfish and everything else that are just trying to feed up before the winter hits. Very end of the lake. This will be the last area that's going to go, but it is still very, very good. I'm going to go over here by Duckhead Point. Um, right here, this is Duckhead Point. Those fish are coming off of these points here, and they're moving back and further and further into these pockets and feeding up on shad, same kind of situation, it's the same pattern all over the lake, it just happens at different times. I'm showing you guys some areas I've fished before in the past and had luck um, and gotten a lot of fish out of. This is a great big back, back area here in this long, long cove. This cove is like, I don't know, probably close to a mile and a half, two miles long maybe. Um, it's fairly deep out here as you can see, it's about 75 feet out here in the very middle. That it says it's 73, no, oh, there it is, 76, 79. So it gets very deep out there in the mouth of this cove. Um, Jennings Branch Cove, I guess is what they call it. It's, it's just a cove by Duckhead. I wanted to show you guys uh, the gravelly and the glaze arm real quick before I go. Um, same kind of situation in the upper areas over here. In the very beginning of fall, these areas are excellent. This is really, really, really shallow area back in here. Um, there's actually like sandbars out here if you're driving along Highway 5 over by Gravelly Mill. You can look out here and it has it on the map. There's like some land sticking out. Um, so it's very shallow flat. There is a lot of uh, new water coming in here from, from this creek that comes in. And uh, old creek channel. Same situation over here on this other side. And last but not least, this is the glaze arm. Again, got some really big long coves in here. No docks in this cove though. That's the only thing that changes. In those other arms of the lake, they have a lot of docks. This is a state park area up here on the glaze. So there's not really any docks up here. So you just have a lot of more lay downs and things, which is very good. You don't have any of the shallow docks back in here. So it kind of li limits you a little bit in that regard. But you'll, you'll find the fish if you're covering water by power fishing. Cover as much water as you can until you find the active fish. They will be back in those areas somewhere. That's true for anywhere on this lake. Just keep finding active fish because if you're hanging out in an area too long, you'll be kicking yourself when you find out that you spent an hour in a cove and you didn't catch anything and you need to go to the next cove over and there was a ton of shad blowing up back in there the whole time you could have been on that entire time you were over there not catching anything so and as long as the fish are feeding in that area stay there as soon as they kind of die off you're not catching anything for a few minutes i'd move on because those fish have without further ado guys i'm going to call this one um, i could talk here for another hour about all the different places on the lake that can you can catch fish there's bass all over the lake of the ozarks you don't have to go to any of the places i showed you here today you can go find your own or you can fish some of the ones i showed you um there's enough fish in this lake i'm not gonna run out of them to catch so uh thank you guys for watching today's video so much subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so drop a thumbs up down below and share this with your friends if you enjoyed this uh, thank you guys. We'll catch you on the next one and have a good day. Good luck out there.